What's up, .NET developers? Have you heard of ChatGP and seen that it's taken the tech world and just society in general by storm? What if I told you that you can have a ChatGPT-like experience right inside of Visual Studio? We're gonna talk about that on this edition of Learning .NET and C Sharp with Isaac. Hey folks, Isaac Levin here with another edition of Learning .NET and C Sharp with Isaac, a place to learn all sorts of the cool stuff that's coming out in .NET 8 and C Sharp 12, all the way up to .NET Conf uh, in November of 2023. So if you're liking the videos here, be sure to like, subscribe, leave some comments below if you like them, or if you want to see other sort of stuff around .NET and C Sharp, and also share with your friends, because I think everybody could look at some of the cool things that are coming out and see how we can implement them in our apps. Let's talk a little bit about AI assisted tools in general. So most folks have probably heard of at least of ChatGPT at this point. Um, it's been a handful of months since it came out. And the idea of being able to give it some question and give it some context, and it proceeds to give you an answer Responding to that content, answering that question is really, really valuable. And ChatGPT is awesome. It's built by a company called OpenAI. And there's all sorts of really awesome things you can do with it. So what if we had a ChatGPT-like experience where you ask questions and you get responses, but it was inside of Visual Studio? So if you've heard of another AI-assisted tool called GitHub Copilot, it's just that. So GitHub Copilot Chat, which is right now, it's currently in private preview. You can sign up for the waitlist. I'll be sure to put a link to the, um, the place where you can go to sign up for the waitlist in the description for this video. So go down below if you um, want to get on the waitlist. So what GitHub Copilot Chat allows you to do is a very similar experience to ChatGPT, but it's using GitHub Copilot as the backend for it. And I mean, instead of me trying to explain it, let's just actually take a look and see what that experience looks like. So right here, I'm inside of Visual Studio. Um, I Before I did this, uh, started this video, I created a .NET new Blazor server project. So .NET new dash Blazor server, what have you, right? So as you can see here, .NET 7 app using the .NET SDK web project type. Uh, and there's nothing really exciting in here. And if you recall, if we just run this really quick, um, the built-in template that's provided by .NET 7, .NET 8, .NET 6, it's, um, it has a couple of interesting features, right? So you have a home and you have this counter which shows you the, the rich you know, post-back experience without having to actually post-back. And then we have this fetch data where it's actually taking some data from, a back, from the server and passing it back to the UI. So it, just to remind ourselves what that actually looks like for the, the backend fetching data piece, we have this fetch data dot razor file. And as you scroll down here, nothing really exciting, but it calls this forecast service, um, this get forecast async method. And from that here, it just returns some sample data. Um, so what I will be able to do is I want to take this project and maybe I want to, maybe I just came to this project. Think of this as a, a something that maybe I'm a developer and I've came to and it's, I've been asked to maintain an app similar to this, not this app specifically because this is obviously just a, a template, but maybe this is a more um, complex, more involved project and I'm being asked to maintain it. Well, we can use GitHub Copilot Chat to be able to help us along the way. But first, let's talk about how we can get GitHub Copilot Chat. So right, I'm going to stop this project from running real quick. And if I go into the extensions window and I go to manage extensions. So as you can see here, I have some extensions installed. If I go online and just search for GitHub Copilot, if I can spell pilot, Right, you're going to see that there's a, a couple of projects, right? So I have this GitHub Copilot, which is the one that is an AI pair programmer, which gives you like autocomplete and uh, code suggestions and things like that. And then we have this Visual Studio extension for GitHub Copilot, and it's in a trial right now. So basically, this is GitHub Copilot chat in a nutshell. Um, this, so this is the extension. If you get if you get off the wait list, this is what you're going to need to install. And there'll be detailed instructions when you get that email from GitHub. So and then the next step, obviously, is to make sure that you're logged into a GitHub account, which which I already am. Okay, so let's just walk through what the experience is for using GitHub Copilot Chat. So once you install the extension, you'll go up here to your view, and then if you go into other windows, you should have, if I can find it here, oh, it's not, it's not in um, other windows, it's right here. So in the main, at the root of the view, um, 
tab, there's a GitHub Copilot chat, and then you'll have this tab here, and let's just actually pin this. So as you can see, the first thing it says, hello, let's build together, here's some suggestions. So we can ask it questions, like what does console.writeline do? And it'll actually, based on that prompt, it'll actually give us a response. So it'll say, you know, console.writeline is a C-sharp method, and then it gives you some code samples and all sorts of stuff. And then you can continue to ask questions to your heart's content. And if you like the, the responses, you can give it a thumbs up. If you don't like, you can give it a thumbs down, and you can also clear out to go back to this main string. All right, so we're back in our project here. And you know, maybe I'm fresh to this project. Maybe I haven't had the opportunity to build things or maintain this project for a bit. And some of this code might be confusing to me. Most notably, like I don't know what this code does. Like return task dot from result and this enumeral dot range, and then it's using like it's like, like using some sort of link statement, and then it's creating something, right? Maybe I'm new to .NET. Maybe I'm new to C sharp. Maybe or maybe I'm just somebody who hasn't done these sort of things before, and I want to know what this code actually does. So I can highlight this code here, and I can ask Copilot. So what does this code do? So if I click that, GitHub Copilot will actually start to answer my question with some context. So the response it gives you is this code is a C sharp implementation of the weather forecast and it uses task from result and it uses this method random.share.next to create. That's how it gets the temperature. And you know we can continue to go about this path and ask it more and more questions, right? So again, like this is already really valuable because you can look at code that already exists and ask GitHub Copilot chat, hey, what does this code actually do? So that's really good. I'm gonna thumbs up that one just the, the model um, learn from that but let's take this one step further maybe you're asked to do um, make some modifications to an existing code base right and maybe you don't have some familiarity with the code base as well as what you're being asked to do so for instance like i'm just going to hover hover over this again how would i rewrite this code to use and so one thing that you'll see here is that it's using static data. So it's, you know, it's generating temperature randomly. It's creating a random summary based on this array of summaries. Maybe you want to use real data. So I signed up before this. I signed up for the Open Weather API, which is a an API which has a free version um, to basically get you real weather results. So um, before I started this video, I did a couple of things to this project. So the first thing is I took I signed up for the Open Weather API. I took the API key from the website and I put it into my app settings on JSON. And then as you can see here, I'm injecting using dependency injection, construction injection, and I configuration. So what I'll need to do here is I will need to add some code and we'll do that in just a second. But let's get back to the task at hand. How would I rewrite this code to use the Open Weather API. So I'm going to ask Copilot chat this and then it's going to give me some response. So it gave me some code right off the back. Like that's pretty exciting. Ma'am, can you explain what this code does? So before we take some code randomly from um, an AI system tool, we need to get an understanding of what the code does. So certainly this code is defining this um, and it has a summaries field. So this is actually it looks like it's for the previous question. So um, let's just thumbs this down and let's just ask it a different question. So how could I what was the question I asked earlier? So how would I rewrite? So how so what if I want to use? I wanted to use the open weather API and we could have taken the code up, but I want to show us an example of actually giving us some code and giving us some response in some context as well. Here we go. So this is a bit more valuable. So let's expand this out a little bit to use the open weather API. You need to first obtain an API key from their website. So I've already done that. So that's awesome. Here's an update version of the get forecast method async that uses the weather API to get weather forecasts. So it actually has code in here. So it has the the actual it use looks like it's just using the uh, it's creating a new HTTP client and it's getting the endpoint um, for a particular um, method or an API to get that. And then it's going to, looks like it serializes it into JSON. It uses um, jobject.parse, which is interesting. That's really, really cool. And then it creates um, that weather forecast object that we're used to. So it says in this updated version of the code, we're using HTTP client and it explains all that. So that's really, really helpful. And I can actually just copy this code here and let's just um, take that out of here and let's make this a bit smaller and then let's just have that here oops 
Yeah, so let's actually comment out this entire thing. Sorry about that. And then we have this new thing. So we're going to pass it in a city um, and then it's going to take the city and then the app ID. But first, remember, we need that app ID. So maybe I'll ask this question. Um, how could I store the API key in configuration? Oops. Configuration and reference it in this code. So I already know how to do this, but I'm gonna ask that question still to us. So it tells us put it in I configuration, um, we put it in app settings, and then it shows us. So here we go, API key. So config weather API key. So I'm gonna take this code, even though this is the code that I know that I was going to create, um, it, it helps me as I go through my programming steps. And let's just go up here. So we have open weather API key, which is the name of that setting. And then we have API here. Oh, it looks like it actually already added to that. I wasn't even paying attention. So that's kind of cool. So the next thing is it looks like I have an error message here. So uh, J object dot parse. So if I control dot here, uh, it's a, it can, I can install a NuGet package. Um, but let's just ask it like I'm getting an error with J object dot parse. So what is J object dot and again, we might know the answers to some of these questions, but it's good to get context, especially when we have an AI system tool helping us. So it's it's in a method in the noonsoft.json link namespace. Um, how do I add the Newtonsoft package to this project? And I know the answer to this question already, but I'm going to ask it and it's going to tell us exactly how to do it. It says right click on Solution Explorer and select manage NuGet packages. And then it says browse to noonsoft.json. So it's actually showing us in Visual Studio how to add new NuGet packages, new package references. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to manage uh, our new package references. And because noonsoft.json is a very largely, uh, it's a well-known project, it's usually up at the top here. So let's click that, click install. And then the next thing is, after installing the package, you include this in the using statement. So I'm going to close that out. And then as you can see here, let's just that it saves the noonsoft.json in there. And then let's just scroll up to the top and let's add that using statement. All right. So then we have this here and then we can control dot and it says using noonsoft.json.link. That's awesome. So once we completed that, we're getting some more error messages. So, you know, because the code isn't going, might not work in every single case, it's going to maybe throw us some error messages. Maybe we can ask some additional questions. So we hover over that. Can I implicitly convert system.datetime to system.date only? So let's just do, so one of the things that's very interesting about this particular API, and I looked this up earlier, is that it's, um, a forecast over hours. So you get a certain amount of, it's every three hours for four days. So with our previous example, we were getting the weather forecast each day, but now we have more data points and we have a new thing we need to worry about. We need to worry about time as well. Um, so in this particular case, let's just, um, we need to modify our weather forecast uh, class. So we can go to that and we can change this to date time, right? And then if we go back here, this, should go away. So now we're getting to a point where we have some code that actually functions. So if we were to build this, it's not going to build because we've actually changed the API endpoint. So earlier it asks for our starting date, but now it's asking for a city. So if we go back to our fetch data, this isn't going to work anymore either. Um, and let's just, instead of just having this be, let's just have this be Seattle for right now. So if I build this, it, hopefully this builds and build started and build succeeded. Cool, so right now everything just works, which is kind of cool. So if we just run this, let's just run this application and we might have some runtime exceptions and we maybe will have the GitHub Copilot fix it, but you know, I went from not being able to have, I didn't have any code to having some code, right? So that's pretty cool. So interesting, so as you can see, like we have some data like this is this basically did everything for me already. So it created, um, you know, based on that response and we can actually let's just do this. Let's create a breakpoint and let's refresh this. 
So as you can see here, um, it create gets a response.txt, which is a bunch of JSON, that's cool. And then it creates a list of forecasts. So if we open up this list of forecasts, as you can see here, there's some interesting things. And inside that forecast, there's this list object, which is the list of all the forecasts. And then it proceeds to um, set the date time offset um, for that particular date time from each individual thing. So that's really, really cool. And again, so we can skip over this. And then if we go back to our project, whoops, just to get rid of that breakpoint, okay, yeah, five you'll see some cool data here. So, but there's one additional thing. So you remember with the open forecast API, now we have to worry about time. So one of the things I wanna be able to add time to that particular project. So let's just thumbs up this and go that. And I know right here, this is where I have to make some changes. So right now I'm just providing the date. I could change this to something, but maybe I want to format the date in a particular way. And I don't know about you, but I always have to go out to Google or Bing or whatever and figure out like, okay, how do I format a date string in a particular way? But I can ask Copilot Chat this. How do I format a date to look like, and then I'll just give it an example. Uh, so May 23, 2023, 12, PM. And what will happen is that GoPilot Copilot will actually tell me the exact string to be able to provide that. So I can actually just take this. So that's exciting. So let's just take this code. And I'm going to have to take that here. So date time, date dot to string and then that and then I'm going to have to close this. And then let's just see what happens. So if I run this, hopefully we'll have a more uh, a formatted date uh, in our fetch data uh, area that is more valuable to us. Look at that. So May 22nd, 6 p.m., 9, whatever. So it's every few hours. So at this point, like I've solved my problem in only a matter of minutes, right? Like I went from having static data um, that wasn't accurate, wasn't 100% accurate, and then using real time data using an API to get some more valuable stuff. And again, like this is just a really simple example of some of the things that we can do. I, I mean, one of the things that's really, really awesome about Copilot and Copilot Chat is that it allows us to, you know, uh, gives us a better developer experience. It's not going to solve all our problems for us. In this case, it gives us a lot of code that we could use. But there were some things that we had to do additional, like we had to add that NuGet package. We had to make some modifications to formatting the data a particular way. But it got us to the what we we're trying to solve faster. And that's what some of these AI system tools really do that's really awesome. And that's it for this video. I hope you really like this one. Be sure to like, subscribe, follow. Be sure to check out all the other C Sharp and .NET videos that I've been posting up until .NET 8 C Sharp launches in November of 2023. And share with your friends. Comment down below. Let me know what you want to see. And that's it for me. Hope you have a great day. Take care.